If you've tried to perfect your split squat form, but you're either getting a lot of knee pain or you're feeling the back leg too much, it could be that you have some mobility restrictions that need to be addressed. And for that, this video right here is for you. Lance and I are gonna go over some of the key mobility components you need to split squat pain-free, as well as how to troubleshoot if you are feeling the back leg work too much. Let's get it. Now we're gonna start by looking at Tony's foot to set up a nice foundation for the rest of our cues. Let's bring it in. So for foot contacts, we wanna make sure that Tony's got pressure through the inside of his heel and the inside arch of the foot. This is just a good indication that he's getting pronation through the foot, which will allow his ankle to dorsiflex and get some knee bend forwards. Tony, can you just show me, uh, first show me rolling to the outside of your foot. So if he's not doing it, he's gonna, <laughs> Tony's structure doesn't allow for this really, but uh, if he's not doing it, he's gonna roll to the outside of his foot. It's gonna look like this. It's gonna kind of look like he's gonna sprain his ankle. So we don't want that. We wanna cue inside of that uh, heel and then inside of that arch, just pressing down into the ground like you're pushing into a trampoline and then just, uh, you can, as you come down, you wanna push into it a little bit more, feel it load, feel it stretch, and get some power as you explode out. If you're experiencing any discomfort whatsoever in the front leg, whether it's a split squat, forward lunge, any type of lunge variation, the first step after you've achieved foot positioning, foot contacts, is to teach yourself to bring your center of mass back so it offloads the front leg. For that, I'm gonna coach Tony through a walking wall squat. Now, depending on which lunge, split squat, whatever is problematic, you're going to offset this slightly. So what you can see here is I have Tony with his left foot ahead of the right. This would be if someone's doing a left lunge or a left split squat. And I also have Tony's heels only on these plates. What that's gonna do is it's gonna allow Tony to flatten his arch if Tony can flatten his arch, he's gonna better able to produce internal rotation through the legs, which you need during any lunging split squat variation. Now from here, what I'm gonna to have Tony do is I'm gonna have a, Tony put your hands on the wall like you parted too hard in Vegas. You're gonna look straight ahead onto the wall. And then what we're gonna do is teach Tony to get his hips to come back. Here's how we're gonna do it. Step one, unlock the knees. I want you soft, lazy. Step two, you're gonna get those foot contacts that Lance coached you through, or if you haven't seen that portion, you wanna put weight through the inside heel and the base of the big toe. Now from here, you're gonna keep looking at the wall. I want you to take a silent in through your nose. Exhale, push into the wall and push your hips back like so. The knees shouldn't move. Now if you get it right, Tony ought to feel the back of his hips engaging. If he doesn't, huh, don't worry. I'm gonna get it going. What I want Tony to do from here then is you're gonna slowly squat down, but I want you to walk your hands down the wall and it should magnify that nice and slow right about there. You don't wanna go too low because what Tony will have a tendency to do is he'll round through his lower back. If that happens because they overshot it, you can simply just coach them to push the hips back a little bit more and hinge. And I'm gonna have Tony hang out in this position. Just breathe silent in through the nose. Long, slow, easy exhale. And if you zoom in nice and close, you can see my man has some legs that are shaking. Now, unfortunately, Tony didn't survive the walking wall squat. So I'm gonna coach Lance through this next drill, which I find really useful if you're someone who's getting a lot of back leg discomfort. You have, you're someone who rounds a lot when you get to the bottom of a split squat and you have a difficult time really sensing the front leg. This is an incredible move. I call this the superhero split squat. Here's what we're gonna do. So I want Lance to go ahead and start square. I want you to unlock your knees and you're gonna look straight ahead. From here, I'm gonna have Lance set out a nice, long, slow exhale. And I want you to go ahead and reach your arms forward. Think hips back, chest down. Now, I'm glad you did that. So. A lot of times when people do that hinge, and you'll notice this, Lance actually moved his knees back along for the ride. So a lot of times when that happens, people will be extending the knees, even if it's in a flexed position. That can put a little bit more pressure through the knees. So Lance, I'm gonna have you do that again, but I want the knees to stay square, not moving, just like that. Now from here, Lance is gonna slide his back, or his right knee back, or his right leg back, like this 
keeping the knee bent, just like that. And so a lot of times you'll notice knee, Lance is locking his knee out. I'm going to keep it unlocked because when you lock the knee out, that shoves the weight forward. So now we're going to be in this position, a little bit more of an unlock, right there. Now, from here, he's, he's pretty much in position the way I want him. It's a little bit more of a hinge split squat. I want you to just go ahead and push off your big toe, shift your center of mass a little bit more forward. I would just say shift your weight. And then you can start with an ISO hold by having Lance just take a knee a little bit on the way down, nice and slow, right about there. And you should feel mostly like back of the left hip. Hold, breathe it out, just like that. And then if he's feeling pretty good with the isometric, I can have Lance go ahead and rep it out, go a little bit up without unlock or without locking the knees, excuse me. So down and then up just like that. Very short range because you want to try to use this to improve some of the motion in the hips so we can build this up into a pain-free split squat. If it's still kind of eh, sus, maybe your technique isn't as good as you thought it was. For that, you got to check out this video that Lance and I did here where we go over some of the key split squat components and technical aspects needed to perform it well.